Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make one of the most discussed and argued recipes in the world, I think, and it's carbonara. There is a lot of disinformation online and in the different countries that I've been to, that I've seen, where people claim things are carbonara that are not really carbonara. Within Italy itself, there's different variations. There's some people who say that some things are added, whereas others Others say that they aren't. One thing is for sure in all Italian recipes, this cream never goes into carbonara. So let's throw it away. In Italy itself, there's people who like to add onions, who like to add garlic or who like to add parsley. But apparently the really original carbonara does not have onions and does not have garlic. This does not mean that if you, someone serves you one with onions or garlic, they're serving you something that is not carbonara. However, when it comes to the meaty part, ham is a no-go. Bacon, well, you can close an eye on it if you can't find guanciale, but you have to use guanciale. Guanciale is, apart from the name, easily recognizable because it has a lot of fat and very little meat. I am very proud to have found one that has more meat because I don't really like fat. Then, you need eggs. You can discuss about the fact whether you want to add the whole egg, whether you want to add only the egg yolk. That also is mostly up to you and your personal preferences. Then when it comes to the cheese, the best and only cheese that should go in is Pecorino Romano because it's from Rome. And the recipe is actually originally from Rome. The best one is the one with the black border, but I couldn't find it, so I'm sorry about that. I have one that I don't even know what kind of border it has. And then you need a lot of black pepper. And that's basically all you need. Well, pasta, obviously, but that you already know. Let's get to it. So, let's start with our guanciale. We actually need only 150 grams, and this is 300 grams, so it's too much. Let me separate it real quick. Then we remove the border. We won't throw it away because this gives a lot of flavor. We cut it and keep it there. Now we dice it. Now this is cut. We throw in our lower part. We throw in our guanciale. And then we fry it until crispy. Don't add any oil because you, you see there's already more than enough fat, you won't need any oil. So now we go over to the last part and sec second and last part of our carbonara. If you hear some sizzling sounds, it's the guanciale that is still searing hot in the pan. So, now we go to the funny part, which is grating the cheese. You will need more or less 60, 70 grams, but then again, it's up to you and your personal flavor. I love cheese, so I'm probably going to use a lot. Story time. When I was a kid and my mom made carbonara, I was the one in charge of the big work and job of grating the cheese, which is actually a quite tedious work if you grate cheese as a kid. And maybe it's even dangerous because you might cut yourself, but somehow I never cut myself and I don't know how I managed, it's probably a miracle. So this should be enough for now. If we want anything more, we can always add it on later. Call it edit later on. So. Now we shouldn't forget to start boiling the water for our pasta because we will be needing some of the water for our sauce. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Let me switch it on. It's just boiling there, so next. We will be using, technically you use one egg yolk per person and I usually, I learned it with one whole egg to crown the whole 
We're only two people, but I'm making food for four, so follow me. We start by cracking the eggs. Removing the yolk, keeping the egg white. Someone will have a nice egg white omelet. Isn't that fashionable or something? I've heard about that lately. I don't follow fashion, so I don't know what trend is in at the moment. So, whatever. I had a phase when I was a kid that I only liked egg white. I don't know why. I only ate a at egg white because I thought, I don't know, the egg yolk was so dry. And the last one that I add as whole. Try not to throw in too many eggshells. So, now I have to wash my hands because obviously I got myself dirty. Hold on a second, I'll be right back. Now we're going to use this amazing tool, no idea what it's called in any language, and we mix it. It's nice. Great, our water is about to boil, so we add in salt and our pasta. For pasta, I'm using spaghetti. I don't measure in any fancy ways, I think this is enough for the two of us. Now back to our cooking water. The reason why we want to add cooking water is to kill the bacteria that might cause salmonella that are contained usually in raw eggs. Now it's quite liquidy, so we add more cheese. Alternatively, if you don't want to add some water, you can also add one tablespoon of water or two tablespoons of water and put it into the microwave for five seconds. That also works. So, while the pasta is cooking, we add in our guanciale with the oil. As you can see, carbonara is a very, very, very light dish. The reason is because people used to eat this when they went to work, when they went to tend their cattle, when they went to, when they were shepherds, when they went to work in the fields. So you needed something to keep you alive during the long hours. Now it's time to add in the pasta. Now you probably understand why I've been using such a big bowl. It was to have enough room to work when everything's together. And now we serve it. So here's our plate. Now it's time to finally add the pepper. There's a reason why I add it at the end, because it depends on the person. Some people like it with more pepper, pepper some with less. And especially when you have children eating there, eating together with you, maybe adding too much pepper in the main bowl might be a bit too much. But here we go. Oh, and by the way, if anyone says something about salmonella and children, uh, I've been eating it all my life and I've been always fine. And we did not have chicken at home, so yeah. Here we go. This is our final product. This is our carbonara. So that's it. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more videos of me making original Italian dishes, mostly, subscribe. Comment if you know any other recipe that might be more original or if you can prove that the original recipe has actually cream in it. And I'll see you again in the next one. Bye.